Earlier on, we talked about these layers, which are your, in your layered shapes. These are the paper piecing layers. And it's not really paper piecing as we know it. It's Josh, who's one of the designers. He called it paper piecing because he didn't know what else to call it. But we're going to utilize these. So I've cut two of the larger one and glued them together with spray adhesive. And I've done four of the smaller one. So you've got those two snowflakes. But I thought it would be really nice to do something to go behind it so that you could hang them at Christmas and create hanging ornaments. But I want some color behind it because that's just going to look a bit wishy-washy. So... We're going to use a different product this time. It's plastic, but it's different to Doflex. It's called Yupo. And it's um, it, the ink, the alcohol ink reacts very differently with this than it does with the Doflex. So on the Doflex, because it's a, a heavier medium, it drops and it spreads, but it doesn't spread like it does on this. So I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So the files that I, need, I want to cut are the outside edge of these two shapes so i'm going to show you how you get those and then we're going to start playing around all right so into the usb i've already got to the screen where the projects are so i'm going to scroll down until we get to the layered shapes and the snowflake and i've just used a few of the stencils i didn't want to go to town and do loads and loads and loads of different ones because i thought you know what you want to surprise when you get it home as well and the, but you can do most of these techniques with most of the stencils so you've got years of joy and fun to be playing with right so i'm going to go into the snowflake paper pieces he's called it and when i put this onto the mat i can move the outside edge so i've got a solid so that could be a card base if you wanted it to be you'd weld two together and cut them out so you've got all those as well and then this detail i'm just going to edit and put it in the bin that's not removing it off the USB that's just removing it off your screen so you want that one and then you want the paper piece too which is right next to the previous one so what I've already gone ahead and done is I've saved them onto the USB so I'm going to go right down to the bottom and there are the two files I've resized them so this one is 164 millimeters and I've made it so that it's square so 164 by 164 and then this one is 101 by 101. So I've got those pieces ready. Now, when you put your UPO onto your mat, this is, a, this is the mat that we retacked this morning. So you can see now it's nice and sticky, but use a low tack mat and don't, or, or an older um, standard mat, but don't burnish it down like we did with the Doflex. So remember when we did the Doflex and we really pushed it down so it didn't move. This, is, this reacts differently to the mat. It's very much like if you put Pro Paper on your mat, it sticks differently to if you put Super Smooth on your mat. It's the way that it's made, it's what it's made for. So I just press it over with my hand like this and that's enough on a tacky mat because you do, if you when you try to pull it off if it's too sticky it, it crinkles a bit like memory board does you know when you get those creases in it it does that so i'm just going to very gently put that down i would use on your cm machine probably a pressure of two and a blade of six that should do it and on here i've still got my cut amount on one on the sdx and it will just cut it once so i'm going to load my mat in and I'm going to let it do its thing and it doesn't take long to cut so we can sit and have a look watch the machine cutting because it's quite mesmeric isn't it really so I'm going to press I don't want to press save Melanie you want to press okay please select and cut I haven't changed my settings since we last cut something so I'm just going to press start and less than two minutes those two pieces will be cut now just going back to this you could have this with the UPO on here so that you can see it you could then flip the design just in case it's not bang on symmetrical and do another one and back the two pieces of UPO together so you've got the non-inked side against the non-inked side of the other piece and then build it out dimensionally so you could then hang it and it would spin and that would look really lovely at Christmas you could put it in an aperture if you're making a big card you can make this smaller because if you think about three mil being the smallest piece and this is probably your smallest part on there these lines will get a little bit thin at some point, so be aware of that. But that will look fabulous. Or you could cut it out of acetate and do it in acetate as well. That looks amazing. So you've got loads and loads and loads of different ideas. 
just think about the ink that you're using, if you're using ink, the pens that you're using, if you're using pens, the glue that you're using because you're working with plastic and you're working with um, a solvent ink. So just think about what you're using before you start your project. Don't get halfway through and go, oh no, I'm gonna, I can't use that glue. So just work it through before you start. Um, sometimes I do that, sometimes I completely forget. That's why I'm telling you to do it because it happens to me all the time. Um, but it's, you know, it's all trial and error and um, most of the time out of an accident comes something amazing in craft, so it's all good. So you can see now how easily this peels off because I hadn't burnished it down. So now I can just bend my mat slightly, don't crease your mat, but just bend it slightly and then these will just peel off. Now, I have two that are already dry, but I really want you to see alcohol ink on Yupo because the first time I saw it, it made me want to buy, well, I did, I went out and bought every alcohol ink because it just blew my mind. I was like, what is that product? I need to have a play with it. So I want to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to work on this board again. And it's interesting with the alcohol inks because when you drop it on Yupo with some of the colours, you get to see what colours it's made up of because it splits. But it splits in a good way, not like, you know, a cake mix splitting. So it's a good thing. And I'm going to do it in blues and purples just to make it look a bit different. And then I've also got a pearl mixative. So a pearl shiny one. Move those out of the way because they're completely in your way and you can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with cloudy blue. This isn't a pearl one, so I don't need to bother shaking it. And I'm just going to drop this. Now watch what happens when I drop this. Can you see how it just spreads by itself? Look at that. It's still, it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's fabulous. And it's splitting now. So there's a brown coming out in it as well. And with this, you can do this because it moves. It's not like it's going to not going to end up looking dotty, even though you're putting dots down because it moves so much. I'm just going to hold this up slightly. So I'm going to lift it that way. I don't want it to run. I might lift it up that way like that. I'm going to lift it up towards that zoom camera so that you can see what it does. Can you see how it's splitting and the colours are coming out? It's absolutely amazing. I love it. And every colour is different. So just, we are trying to source this because I found it, it's a really heavy weight. So I bought some the other day that was a heavy weight thinking it will be brilliant. Can't get it off the mat. And it doesn't move like this does. So we're trying to source this particular product. It's not true Yupo, but we are trying to source because I found that this is this is even better. Um, so we're going to I'm then going to drop on some turquoise. It's called turquoise. So I'm not just you know, that's the actual color if you want to replicate this. And again, I'm just going to go over the top and it moves. Can you see how it creates a cell within a cell then? It's so it's fabulous. I could spend hours doing this. I love it. It's one of my favorite techniques. And I'm hoping that at some point we'll be able to bring this to you on Creating Craft and we'll be able to bring it with the Ink Lily refills because it's a really good way of using those too. So that'd be cool. But again, if you don't like the smell of alcohol or you're not good with it, then you need to work in a well, very well ventilated area. If I start slurring my words later, you'll know why. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not that strong. Right, amethyst is next. Now this is a really deep dark purple and you might want to put, you're gonna put a few layers on this. Look at this. I'm just gonna literally shake that bottle and these cells. And I'm doing it quite horizontally because I don't want loaves. Look, look at that. <laughs> it fascinates me. I have no idea how it works. And I actually don't care how it works because I just love it. And that's not like me. I normally want to know how everything works but I just love this. I will find out at some point, but it's interesting how it, how the inks react differently with different plastics. It's worth having a really good play around. So I'm just really randomly just dotting here and there because it's going to move anyway. I have no control over it. So I might as well just put it down and let it do its thing. Okay, so I want a little bit um, less purple. So if you overdo it and you think mm, it's a bit too purpley now, you can go over with another colour because it moves it. So this is the pearl 
and it's called Tranquil. So they do pearly, pearly um, alcohol inks, mixatives. They do alloys, which respond differently again. Um, and the regular alcohol inks. So I'm just filling in now with that pearl. And you get a different look again. It does look like it fizzes. The first time I saw this, I just sat there for ages watching it. It's fascinating. But it's just the smallest amount moves that ink. It's fabulous, isn't it? If I do it here, watch. And even if it's started to dry, it'll be slower, but it still moves it. And I find it dries quicker, find it dries much quicker on Upo as well. So it's it's a good try it. I'm just gonna dab in that. And then I like to finish off with a bit of white pearl because it just gives it a shimmer, but it's up to you whatever inks you've got. Again, I don't want you to go out and have to spend a fortune. I want you to use what you've already got. You could do it with, um, I'll tell you what else would look nice, not on uh, Upo, but on watercolor card would be your brushos or your pixie powders, things like that, just to create something a bit different. And I love that. I think that looks fabulous. And you can sell these, sell these. That looks amazing. Right, I'm gonna move that one over there to just evaporate. It won't take long at all that. I can see it's already, it's already gone really matte around here. It's just where I've put the fresh ink. So within minutes that will be dry. And I'm gonna grab one that I did whoop, earlier on. So again, you'll never get two the same. No matter how much you try, you'll never get two the same. But look how fabulous that looks. Isn't that magic? Look. Look. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? I love it. Look at it. It's amazing. And they say, don't they, that every single snowflake is a different shape. Well, every single one of these is going to be a different pattern because you're never going to get two the same. I think they look absolutely phenomenal. But we need to add our finishing touches which is our cutting file. So what I would suggest you do is use a spray adhesive and I haven't tried it, so I'm gonna try it right now. <laughs> this is quite tame for me. I usually try it on live TV, don't I? So I've got my really posh um, spray booth. Make sure you use something like this, put some paper in the bottom and then if I can get the lid off this, there we go. Short, sharp blasts. I really shouldn't do that with glasses near it because I'll end up with it all over my glasses. But needs must. And then you will see your little fronds on the end here. You've got a deeper one and a, a narrower one. So your twos go on the narrow one and your threes go on the other way. Now look how fabulous this looks. Oh, I love this. This is super cool. I wouldn't even entertain using the all stick for this because it will just the the areas are too fine and if you put it on a glass mount and try and pick it up it'll just string everywhere so for what it is it's worth getting yourself a really good and this is a permanent spray adhesive it's not a repositionable one so it's a bit stronger it will hold its hold its own and don't worry if there's bits, if it doesn't line up absolutely perfectly, it looks phenomenal. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. So excuse me while I just spray this. Please don't do that. Please go outside with your box. I will. It'll be fine. And then I'm just going to pop that onto there and that colour just starts to pop through. So you could do this with the waist and create something with that as well. And then that, you could have that way on top of there, or you could have it that way on top of there, the way it's meant to be. I don't mind which one. I'm going to have a look on the camera and then I can decide which way I want it. That way, or that way, this way. And then, because you've got a solid piece of UPO at the back, help if you actually open the bottle Melanie you can then use your all stick on the back because it's a solid area 
so that will make sure that that holds in place and I'm going to go there so you could have another one of this and glue them back to back and then you could make this smaller and do another one on top do maybe a single snowflake out of your UPO um, on, and just have a hanging ornament that then hangs for Christmas but how fabulous is that that on the front of a card would look really different without having to go out and spend a fortune. So it's UPO, alcohol link, which you might already have, and you've got that fabulous ornament or front of your card or scrapbook page embellishment or put it in a box frame, but that looks amazing. So I hope you really hope you enjoyed that. I know it took a little bit longer than than the other um, tutorials, but I just thought it was nice for you to see from start to finish. And I'm just gonna bring these other ones back in now so that you can see. I don't think I've got any areas where it's tacky enough to put any foil on, but you could do that. You just have to get, gauge the time right. But look how lovely that one looks now. It's great, isn't it? Look at the shimmer and shine on that. And nobody will have a clue if they're not a crafter how you've done that. It's great fun. So have a play and it's perfect for putting all your stencil designs on top of. So get yourself some alcohol inks and some UPO and have a really good play. We'll come back in a minute. We'll do something completely different. <laughs> 